In this video, we are going to learn how to use D3 in a React project via a real world example. This video assumes basic to intermediate understanding of React concepts such as TypeScript, JavaScript, hooks, blah, -de blah. And what we're going to do is transform this into this. This is our starting point. First, let's comment out the original timeline component by coming over to our source code and finding the file for the parent component in which the original timeline component sits. And once we find the relevant JSX, we can comment it out and start building the new and improved D3 timeline component. Here it is. Comment it out, save, and poof, the original timeline component is gone. Now let's start building up the new D3 timeline component. Now let's create a folder that will house the new D3 timeline component in some area of your source code. I have put mine here. And inside of this folder, create a .tsx file that will house the JSX for this new component we will build. Because I'm using VS Code and I have a special VS Code extension installed, I can simply type RAFC to generate a boilerplate React component. If you're not using VS Code, then just create a React component that looks something like this. Now let's go back to the parent component again and import our new D3 timeline component. Let's come over to the parent component, collapse the file explorer to have more space. And because we want this new component at the top of our UI, that is where we will put it. So we'll uncomment this bit of JSX, save, and we still need to import the component at the top of the file. So because we're using VS Code, we can simply type command dot enter save. And look at that. Here is our new D3 timeline component. Let's edit the D3 timeline component to return the following UI elements each time it's rendered. We want to replace the default div with a div that has an ID of d3-timeline-widget. And we also want to create a useRef hook that allows us to make edits to this section of our DOM without automatically triggering re-renders. React is famous for automatically re-rendering the screen each time state in our component changes. This ensures that the UI is always showing the latest state. Sometimes, however, this is not desired. For example, in what we're trying to do. The use ref hook allows us to make edits to state in our component without triggering the default behavior of React, which is to automatically refresh the screen. That is what use ref allows us to do. Now we are going to add a custom hook to our D3 timeline component. The custom hook we will add is called use resize. Here is the code for the use resize hook. What the use resize hook will do is trigger a re-render of our D3 timeline component each time the window is adjusted in size. Now let's add a use effect hook to the D3 timeline component. The purpose of the use effect hook is to co-locate related logic that will get triggered upon certain state changes. So let's create a use effect hook that will trigger some code each time the window size is adjusted. You can see in the logs that each time the window size is adjusted, we receive the updated width and height in our code. For step seven, we are going to install all of the D3 related NPM packages we will need for the rest of this video. 
Now we will add an SVG canvas inside of our D3 timeline component that will allow us to paint pretty, pretty pictures, pretty, pretty charts. If we come over to the elements pane in the Chrome console and inspect our D3 timeline component, we see that an SVG canvas has been appended. Just to make sure the SVG canvas is working, let's draw a blue rectangle. And it's looking good. The way I have organized the code is all of the draw logic will be stored inside of this helpers folder. Here is the code for drawing the blue rectangle. If you're wondering about this other color, this other color is the gray background seen elsewhere on this overview page. Much more subtle, but we're just verifying the canvas is working. Now let's draw the timeline on top of the SVG canvas. The leftmost time in this timeline is going to be the first event in the list of events that we pass to our D3 timeline component. If you remember back to the original timeline component, it was showing a sequence of events or a list of events. So the first event will be the leftmost time and the last event will be the rightmost time. Here is the code that draws the timeline, just to be exhaustive. Now let's draw our events on top of this timeline. Each event is going to be represented as a dot on top of this timeline. Here is the code for drawing the dots that represents each event on the timeline. Okay, so we're drawing an ordered list of events on a timeline. Fantastic. Now let's add one more dot to represent the current point in time. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a new escrow agreement because I've been using this escrow agreement for a while now and all of the dates on this timeline are long past. So let's come over to the contracts library, choose escrow agreement, click create contract, provide our password, sign the create contract request. And when the request is done mining, we will have a new timeline with fresh dates. Let's update the code to include the code for drawing the current event. And you can see a dot that is blue moving across towards the end of the timeline as I manually refresh the UI. All right. You can see the blue dot moving from left to right. Fantastic. Let's animate this so that we don't have to constantly refresh the page. Here we are back in our D3 timeline.tsx component. We are now about to add the code for implementing the automated animation feature for animating the current point in time across the timeline from left to right. Here is the code. So you can see we've added another use ref hook. This one is keeping track of the state of the animation as far as timing is concerned. And we are also using another use effect hook. And this use effect hook is leveraging the request animation frame API. The request animation frame API allows us to trigger a function each time the browser is about to repaint the screen. This animate function is the function that we want to call each time the browser is about to repaint the screen. In it, we are calculating the amount of milliseconds between each frame. And after that amount of milliseconds has elapsed, we are drawing the next frame of the animation to the screen. Go back to our app, launch a fresh contract, sign the contract transaction request 
And once it's done mining, we should see the current point in time animating across from left to right. We have some cosmetic work to do, but we have done the heavy lifting of implementing this feature so far. And after we layer on some minor cosmetic tweaks, we arrive at the final state of our D3 timeline widget. If you hover over each dot, you get more information about the event. And if we create a fresh contract with fresh dates, we should see a clean animation moving across from left to right. Ah, so satisfying. Hopefully you enjoyed this walkthrough of how to use D3 in combination with React. Enjoy. Peace, blessings, so much prosperity. Wish you all the best.